Hello, my name is Elle Gilbert. I'm a former Egan Fun Fest ambassador and a current member of the Egan Fun Fest ambassador committee. The Egan Fun Fest ambassadors serve as representatives of the Egan community and the host organization, Egan's July 4th Fun Fest. The ambassador program is a scholarship opportunity for young men and women ages 10 to 19 who are interested in participating in leadership, volunteerism, community interaction, and public appearance activities. Beginning in May, candidates participate in a series of judged events leading up to Egan's July 4th Fun Fest. Up to six of the candidates are then selected to serve as Egan Fun Fest ambassadors. Today, we have the 2017-2018 Egan Fun Fest ambassadors with us to share their perspective about the candidate process and their experiences serving as Egan Fun Fest ambassadors. Now, let's meet the ambassadors. Hi, my name is Madeline Sherell. Um, I'm 12 years old, and my sponsor is Metropolitan Pediatric Dental of Egan. Hi, my name is Julia Karstens. I'm 12 years old, and my sponsor is Dennis Carsons. Hello, my name is Jillian Anderson. I am 15 years old, and I go to Egan High School, and my sponsor is Sun Country Airlines. Hello, my name is Lauren Foss. I am 13 years old and I go to Valley Middle School of STEM and my sponsor is Complete Family Eye Care. Hello, my name is Aaron Cabot. I'm 16 years old. Uh, I go to Burnsville High School and my sponsor is Sunburst Chemicals. Now let's learn some things about the candidate process. Lauren, how did you find out about the Ambassador Program? I found out about the Ambassador Program by actually going online because my aunt was a Winter Carnival Princess and ever since I saw her as a princess, I wanted to be just like her. So I went online and found a pro the Egan program. So it's in the family. Mm -hmm. Madeline, how about you? Um, so one of my sister's friends is named Catherine Wilmis. She was a former ambassador, and I found out through her. She always talked about how much fun she had doing it. So I was like, I'm going to try it. And what about you, Jillian? Um, so my sister actually was a last year, was an ambassador last year, and so I saw how much fun and all the good things that she did last year and I was just like yeah I want to be a part of that. So Erin, what did your fan friends and family think about you joining the candidate program? Uh, my family thought it was a really awesome experience. Uh, nobody had ever done something like this before so it was kind of a new environment to step into um, and most of my friends kind of thought the same thing but they were even less informed about it so they didn't really understand so much so I had to explain it to them a bit but once they kind of knew more about it they liked it and thought it was a cool thing. What about you, Julia? What did your friends and family think? Most of my family thought it would be a really good opportunity, and all my friends thought that it would be really fun. Now I'm going to open this question up to everybody. When you first introduced yourselves, you mentioned a sponsor. So each candidate finds a sponsor to support them during their candidacy and their potential reign as an Egan Fun Fest ambassador. Tell us about how you chose your sponsor and how you decided to approach them for their support. Let's start with you, Madeline. Um, so my sponsor is just my dentist, and it was really easy for me to ask them just after my appointment. I was like, hey, do you think uh, you could sponsor me while I'm doing this program? And they, they called their offices, and they're like, yeah, of course. Like That would be really fun for us. My So my sponsor is my grandpa, and so it was pretty easy for me. I just went up to him and I asked him about it and I told him a little about the program and he th said I'd be, he'd be glad to sponsor. Um, for me it was my dad works for Sun Country Airlines which is my sponsor and I've since he started working there it's always been like a part of our family and so I sent an email to one of my dad's co-workers and said hi I'm Brian's daughter and I was wondering if you'd like to sponsor me through this program and I explained about what the program was and they responded, of course. So for my sponsor, they are my, um, we go there for our eye care, so it was really easy. I knew them. It's a family run, so it's smaller um, and I just called them and they said that they do things like this and they would be happy to sponsor me. Uh, for me, my sponsor is my mom's employer. Uh, and I've known them for a long time since I was probably younger than even Julia. Um, and so it wasn't really that hard. I just asked my mom and said, hey, can you ask uh, your boss about if they would be willing to sponsor me for this uh, program that I'm doing? And she said, yeah, and then they just kind of accepted it and went with it. 
All right. Describe, uh, this question is for everybody again as well. Describe your participation in the candidate family potluck picnic. What dish did you bring and why did you choose it? We'll start with you again. Okay, so um, I brought a pasta salad because my family eats a lot of pasta and so I thought it would be fun to share with everyone that if you ever come over to my family's dinners, we're gonna eat some pasta. Yummy. I brought a macaroni and cheese dish and also chocolate chip cookies because uh, my favorite food is mac and cheese and when my mom makes it, it's always way better. And then I've been making chocolate chip cookies since I was younger than like five. Um, for me, I brought these like Rice Krispies rolled up with chocolate inside of them because it's something that my grandma always makes when me and my cousins go to visit her. And that's just a really fun memory that I have. So I wanted to share that with everyone. So I brought my grandpa's famous um, family cookies. Um, they're, they're always at any family get together and they're just, I grew up making them. So they're a really special part of me and my grandpa's relationship. I brought some chocolate mint chip cookies. Uh, I just really love mint and it's just always been something that I've liked a lot so that's why I chose to make it. Well I don't know about you guys but I am really hungry right now. <laughs> Those all sound amazing. This question is for everybody again. Describe how you introduced yourself to the Fun Fest committee during the Meet the Candidate night. What did you wear and why did, why did you choose to wear it? We'll start with Erin this time. Uh, I chose to wear a lot of different things. Um, I wore some things that were like for hobbies I liked, uh, like I really like to watch movies and I really like Star Wars, so I think I wore uh, some Star Wars pants. Um, and I also wore some swim trunks because my job is a, uh, excuse me, um, is a swim teacher, so I teach kids how to swim, so I wore that. And uh, I also decided to bring some objects in. So, for example, I brought a Rubik's Cube because um, I really like to mess around with those and solve them. And I even offered up to the judges if they'd like to mix it up, I'll solve it for them. So for the Meet the Candidate night, I wore a um, shirt from a theater show that I was in. And then I also wore some volleyball things because I played volleyball. Um, and then I also wore a bandana from a Disney cruise that I had recently went on. For me, I wore my, I had my ukulele case on my back and then I wore a life jacket because I work as a swim instructor as well as Erin does. And then I think the biggest part of my outfit was I wore flippers from my uh, swim club that I swim for. I wore a I wore a lot of my gymnastics medals since I am a competitive gymnast and then I wore a shirt for my choir because I like singing and then I think I wore two different shoes I wore flip-flops and Crocs I think yeah um, my outfit was pretty bizarre. I had a gymnastic sweatshirt on because I used to be a gymnast. I was wearing a choir shirt that um, a choir festival I had participated in in October and on top of that choir shirt I had a Feed My Starving Children shirt because I really like volunteering there. Um, I was wearing soccer shorts and soccer cleats because um, I really like soccer and I play soccer. Um, I had a whisk with me because I really like to bake and my hair was done up um, pretty fancy, for like as if I was going to a gymnastics meet. Wow, these are some pretty creative outfits. Jillian, what is one lasting impression you remember most about the candidate interview process with the judges? Is it similar to what's happening now or is it a little bit easier, a little bit harder? Um, the thing that I remember most about the candidate judge interview is just how much of a conversation it was. And it was, it was pretty easy. It was questions about me, who I think I know best. Um, so it was pretty easy. How about you, Madeline? What was your lasting impression from that interview? Um, like Jillian said, it was just like having a conversation with someone. Um, I think I was the first one to go. And um, they just asked me questions about myself, asked me like 
why I wanted to do this program, you know, how I got into it, and overall it was, it was pretty easy, just like having a conversation. Julia, tell me what it was like participating in the Strawberry Festival Parade for Cottage Grove, which was your first parade as a candidate. I think that the parade was really fun and a good parade to learn how to put everything on the float and how to set everything up. So I think that was a good parade to go in and learn everything. How about you, Erin? Do you have anything to add to that, your first parade as a candidate? <laughs> Um, I thought that it was a little confusing at first, but that's just because we had never done anything like that before and we had to learn how to set up the float and how to basically do all the different things while we're on um, the float. So it was a little confusing, but once the actual parade started, it was a lot of fun. Lauren, what was the most fun aspect of being an ambassador candidate? Um, I think the most fun aspect would probably be all the people we got to meet and all the different events we get, got to go to. Because I know a lot of those events I wouldn't have been able to go to if I wasn't a candidate. And it was just great to meet all the candidates and then my fellow ambassadors currently. Madeline, what was the most fun aspect for you? Um, I feel like just getting to know everyone that was in the program or like wanted to try it. Um, all the fun activities we got to do, I feel like that made it all fun too. Um, it's just like, yeah, getting to know people, I think that was probably the most fun part. So Jillian, tell me about coronation practice. I mean, why do you need to practice for coronation? Coronation practice was a lot more important than some people would think it would be, just because you go through the entire coronation and that way you know when you do this and what to do here and you don't fall getting off the stage in your heels. And this question is for everybody. Describe what you were feeling the night of coronation, Ambassador Coronation. Was it scary, exciting? We'll start with you, Madeline. Um, I was very nervous and very excited. Um, I feel like it was really fun to get to talk with all the visiting communities and I just, I feel like everyone was super like supportive and like they congratulated us like once we got crowned, they're like, oh nice job, like we're super excited to have you. Um, like join us in like our parades and come to our coronations. So. I was very nervous but I was also excited because I just it was all so amazing going in they had a big thing in the beginning and then just to sit and watch it was really fun too and then getting crowned was like the cherry on top. For me, it was a very, very nerve-wracking situation because when I first started out, I was so nervous. And then as the coronation went on, um, I got crowned by my sister, which was one of the like most exciting parts of my life, and I love that. I think I was, I was very nervous, um, but it was, it was really helpful to know how everything was going to go um, ahead of time. But I, it was very exciting, and it was, uh, it was a great... It was a great performance as well, and it was great to see everyone, um, all the past ambassadors honored as well, because it's not just about the new ones, it's about the old ones as well. As you probably guessed from all four of them saying it was a nervous night, it was a nervous night. Um, it was very kind of like more stressful towards the beginning, uh, but then as, like Jillian said, as the like night went on with seeing all the different things and how like exciting it was, it was kind of all went away and then there was just that one moment where it all just changed from hey now you're a candidate and now you're an ambassador. Mm -hmm. so. It was a very exciting night. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about some of the experiences after you were selected to be a FunFest ambassador. Lauren, what has been the most fun aspect of being an ambassador? Um, I would say one of the most fun aspects of being an ambassador is you get to meet so many new people and it's fun as a candidate but it's super fun as an ambassador because you get to go to all these new events and then you get to volunteer around the city of Egan which I know is something that there's so many events that I probably would have never gone to without this program so it's great to go to new places and to meet new people. Erin what has been the most fun aspect for you? 
Um, I would probably say just being able to go to all the different places and experience so many different things because when you are an ambassador there are so many different things that you do from just volunteering somewhere to being in a parade somewhere else and you just get to go to so many different places doing so many different things and it's just a lot of fun to do all the different things. And you know not many cities have a male ambassador so what does that mean for you that Egan has a male uh, I ambassador? Think in the program? <laughs> uh, it's definitely a little stressful at times and a little confusing because every now and then you'll get called lady and then you'll still be like, oh, I'm sorry, I mean sir or something like that. Um, but it's pretty good overall. I wouldn't say that it's like any different than them except for a few small things here and there, but it's good. Well, we like having you. <laughs> so. so Madeline, what was your favorite volunteer event this past year? Well, we went to a lot of different volunteer events, but I feel like mm, my favorites were the ones at Holtz Farm because we got to be outside and we weren't like inside the whole day and it was really fun just helping people out, finding their way around. Holtz Farm was always my favorite. Julia, how about you? What was your well, favorite event I, this year? Well, I agree with Madeline. I really liked the Holtz Farm events, just seeing all the little kids run around was fun and then also just helping out during the different days was a lot of fun. Lauren, what was your favorite event? I have to agree with both of them. <laughs> I think Holtz Farm, it was just a great experience. I really liked the Christmas one though. Um, it, was, it was just winter, which is like always great. But we got to make reindeer dust, which I thought was like the cutest thing. And all the kids just had a blast making it, but a lot of kids poured a lot of sprinkles in their reindeer <laughs> dust. So Jillian, tell us, what is the difference between appearances and volunteer events? Because they're not the same thing. Um, I would say an appearance is more like you're showing up and you get to have a good f time with all the other ambassador organizations from the surrounding areas and being in parades and going to coronations. And volunteering is more of getting to have a fun time with the people of Egan and getting to do some good. So as we found out, you all have incredibly busy schedules. Describe how you were able to meet the requirements of the ambassador program while also maintaining your participation in other events like school, uh, dance, gymnastics, swimming, work. Tell us a little bit about that, Erin. Uh, I would say that at first it was definitely a challenge getting adjusted to the new schedule, but once it started to like, once you had an actual plan of when the different events would be, then it was a lot easier because then you would be able to say, oh, I have these two things conflicting at this time. Which one can I go to when or which one should I do? Um, and just being able to have that like planning ahead aspect was like a lot or really helpful. How were you able to balance it all, Madeline? Um, uh, well, I haven't had too much going on recently, but when I did gymnastics, my coaches were really flexible and super understanding about it. They understand like what I was doing and sometimes we have optional events so if you missed an event you could always make it up. Lauren, describe one thing you have learned from working with the team with your other ambassadors this year. Um, I would say one thing I've learned is that everyone is different and everyone has their own fun in different ways um, but we all work together very well and it's just it's great to work with everyone here. Ambassadors represent the Fun Fest throughout the year at many events outside of Egan. Julia, what was your favorite event this year outside of the city and why? Um, I would have to say my favorite event outside of the Egan would probably be Winter Carnival because there's just so many festivities you can go to, like the parade and the coronations. What was your favorite event outside of Egan, Jillian. Um, one of my favorite events outside of Egan was c the Crowning Achievements pageant, which is like a past pageant and ambassador organization for people with spe special needs. And it was just really awesome to see an organization that was so open to every person. Now this question is open to everybody. Describe how being an ambassador has changed you. We'll start with Madeline. Um, being an ambassador has made me realize how many um, events that go on in Egan. Like I didn't know we ha hosted these many events and stuff. So it makes me realize that maybe after I'm done I should start volunteering for these because you know they're always super happy when you volunteer. So I 
feel like I should help around Egan too. <laughs> Julia. Um, well, it's made me become a better speaker, like, out loud, and then it's made me see, like Madeline said, all the different things that actually go around Egan. Julian? For me, it's kind of changed my outlook on a lot of people because I've seen a lot of people at charity events and volunteer events volunteering that I would be, never have thought, like, they would be there. Like, I've seen some teachers who have come to charity events that I'm volunteering at, and I was just so surprised, but it's really changed my outlook. Um, I think it really helps with your public speaking because you have to, you talk in a lot of events and you talk in the float as well at parades, so it really helps with public speaking, which is really good for school as well. Um, and then you also just get to go and help out, and so like Madeline said, you get to volunteer, and I would have never known that these were opportunities that I could have, but I want to continue even after my reign's over. Uh, I would say that the ambassador program has made me a lot better at uh, public speaking too, and also has just kind of made me w more well-spoken, just trying to articulate things more and not like try to just jumble out a bunch of words. And another question for everybody. What advice do you have for someone who is considering joining the candidate program? Someone who might be on the fence about it or maybe it might be a little shy. What do you suggest they do? Aaron? Uh, I would just say do it because nothing bad can come out of it. If, it might be a little like scary at first, but you're just coming out of your shell more and helping you to make you better for the future. I would say the same thing Aaron did is just do it. Um, it's you get to meet so many new people and you have so many new experiences that there's nothing that could really go wrong, and it's just it's a great opportunity. So I would really recommend it. I would also say do it just because yes, you may be a little shy and a little scared at first, but meeting new friends and meeting all of these new people is so worth it. I say that you should do it even though you might be a little nervous. It's better to try things than to not try things and then regret it later. So it's just a really, it's also really good for everything. Um, along with everyone else, um, I suggest that like no matter like what you're thinking, you're like, oh, I'm not sure, like I'm not really good at public speaking. Um, that's what like the candidacy is for. It's like to work on those skills so like you can really be good at representing your city and it's a lot of fun just going to all the events with your candidates and getting to know other royalty communities. What is one thing you wished you knew before becoming a candidate and before being selected as a Fun Fest ambassador? This one is open to everybody. Let's start with Madeline. Um, I feel like they did a really good job at the canon orientation, just letting us know everything. So I didn't really think I had too many questions, just a few little ones like, oh, like, how am I supposed to wear my hair here or whatever. But they did a really good job at answering all of them. Did you have any questions? Not really. It was pretty much all laid out. When we got to orientation, they really just took us through everything. Uh, you had it easy because your sister yeah. was just in it, but was there anything that you um, wish you knew? Something I wish I knew is that it's really a program for everyone, just because I saw it from the perspective of my sister, and so I saw my sister doing it, and it was harder for me to be like, yeah, that's something I'm going to do, just because I had seen her do it, and while we're really similar, we're also really different. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say that I wish I knew not to be so nervous. I think I was really, really nervous in the beginning, and there's really nothing to be nervous about. They tell you everything, and everyone's just very, very nice. So I think that, or I wish that I knew that I shouldn't be so nervous in the beginning. I pretty much say the same thing. Um, it, the biggest thing that I had, is, or the biggest question I had, is like, oh, what if I kind of like get too nervous or mess up, and like it's okay like everybody is like she said really nice and understanding um, and nothing can go wrong and if something does they all they it's probably happened before so they know how to fix it mm -hmm. final question what are your plans going forward after your year your reign as an Egan Fun Fest ambassador comes to a close we'll start with Aaron uh, my biggest thing for the future um, is that I think that after this um, I 
want to put a little bit more focus into school and try and like figure out what I, where I want to go for college and what I kind of want, want to major in. Um, but I also have been thinking about in the future once I'm old enough, maybe doing the St. Paul Winter Carnival and becoming a guard. Exciting. So for me, I want to work or I want to start doing more volunteer work in Egan and continuing that. But I also um, am currently figuring out with my parents if it's if I'm available for the uh, Winter Carnival Junior Royalty next year. For me, um, I'm just planning on studying more and getting more involved in school and then also just having more friends, with, more fun with my friends around Egan now that I know about so many great events. I'm planning to do more volunteer work around the city and then I am also going to try to do Winter Carnival in two years, I think, and then maybe s skip a year and do other things. Um, I think I'll do more volunteer work around Egan because there's so many different events that I didn't know about that need help like during the time that they're going on so I think that would be a great idea like after we're done with our rain maybe we could all go volunteer in an event together. I think that would be really fun. It's all so exciting you'll have such bright futures ahead and we're all so proud of how far you have grown in just the short year that we've known you. You've been such great representatives of Egan. So we hope that the ambassadors have answered some of the questions you may have had about the candidate program and the Egan Fun Fest ambassador program. We encourage both young men and young women to participate in the program. The ambassador program wel welcomes candidates from the cities of Egan, Apple Valley, Burnsville, Mendota, Mendota Heights, Rosemount, and Sunfish Lake. There will be an informational meeting on Wednesday, May 2nd at 7 p.m at the Think Mutual Bank in Egan for potential candidates and their parents to find out more about the program. Join us at Egan's July 4th Fun Fest celebration, July 3rd and 4th at Egan Central Park, and our Ambassador Coronation on Tuesday, July 10th at the Community Center. We hope you will participate in these very fun events. For more information about the Egan Fun Fest and the Ambassador Program, please visit our website at www.eganfunfest.org. Thank you for joining us.